Hello everyone and welcome to game number one in our best of three series round of eight match between Blues and Game Slayer for the third off-world tournament. Soren's joining me today for everything. We are in the Mohawk game stream at the moment, so we'll get a little bit of extra commentary here and another set of eyes to make sure that I don't miss uh, any important details over the course oh. of the match. Got some mediocre carbon here. I assume they're mostly going to be going for iron. But... Yeah. It is a nice map overall, though. Just kind of glancing at it. it might be a little difficult figuring out exactly the best spot to found. Where would you go? I'd be super tempted by the water aluminum patch yep, over there. Just try and take that up. I might go scientific south of that crater right next to it. Because mm -hmm. um, then you're pretty close to a ton of water. Yeah, I was thinking... I might, I'd probably try and found Expansive in the middle of all that. I'd mm -hmm. knock a whole lot of it down, just grab some iron separate from me. Like, there are three nice sources of iron on this map, so you're not sure. going to get cut off from it anywhere. And yep. you also kind of just secure a good source of aluminum and a good source of water later in the game. This is definitely a wait-and-see map, because there's no one single incredible location, so... Yeah. Might as well see. Maybe even pick up some... Uh, some money. They should found quick though. Once the bonus comes up, you know, yeah. the first player gets it, the second player gets nothing. That's so. true. But the second player does get that, that black market cooldown and that extra claim, and both those We're things can make a big deal. In. Or be a big deal uh, going through the game. Oh, good. Wow, that was fast. I guess Glaive Slayer was ready as soon as Blue's claim. He probably knew exactly where he wanted to go, but he did know, it looks like, that he wanted to found second. He didn't want that extra money. He just wanted that immediate upgrade that is available to him still as a robotic player, despite not having the extra cash. Right. And the ability to... He doesn't really have adrenaline boost to abuse this game, but as a robotic player, you can make better use of your adjacency bonuses if you are the one to found second, because you know that you're not going to be attacked by Black Market early. Yeah, whoa, those are some fast upgrades. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. It's exactly what you expect to see. Robotics that do it correctly can basically just found at HQ level 2 these days. Uh -huh. Which is why maybe Game Slayer didn't care about the extra cash on hand. Mm -hmm. Whereas Blues, well, he dropped Expansive right exactly in the spot that I would have. And so he got a lot of cash from that. He got $1,000 from founding early. That's... Really no big surprise that both players immediately HQ level 2 this game. And look at that. That's why you found second. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a quick power surge. That's exactly the reason. There's nothing you can do about that if you found first and the opposing player just decides to power surge you. It's gonna wow. happen. He got them up before they were even built. He mm -hmm. got them down before they were built. You um, know what your opponent's doing? You know he wants his steel. Uh, six. This nanotech, though, that's interesting. Whoa, 28,000 for this. 32, really? That's interesting to me, because a lot of the time you don't see a lot of scrapping going on in 1v1. But you're also so limited on resources, you don't have like a whole lot of room to make mistakes in a 1v1 match. So yeah. I'm impressed Glam Slayer had the money for that power surge, and it still has 20 electronics. Well, he was making steel. He's fine. Yeah. He's good to go, you know? Steel makes a lot of cash these days. It starts at that $60 price, and of course, Blues uh, put himself in a position where he had to buy up steel yep. initially to upgrade because he didn't put down any steel mills whatsoever. So that's just, uh, it makes things a little bit awkward. Now that means Blues is, of course, stuck in the mud, back on about 4,000 resources, whereas Game Slayer sitting on about 12,000 right now. He pretty easily has that upgrade whenever he well, wants to take it. And we'll just have to see what he's deciding to do. Looks like he made a black market purchase of a goon yeah. squad goon first. Squad, yeah. I, want to see it turned around. I like it. I think Game Slayer clearly far more tuned into the game for this match than he was for his uh, round of 16. Oh, and he's going to get that water. That hurts for blues. Still, though, I got to be honest. When you found first, I don't know what you do about that. Like, if you found first and you've gone for expansive or robotic, you're just always going to be opening up yourself that way to get your steel mm -hmm. shut down. You wonder if people will... I mean, he, he, he placed out four steel mills, but, you know, you might want to split up those steel mills. I mean, when you upgrade, you can then rearrange a little bit if you want to. 
Um, it's true. And they are just steel mills. So they don't yeah. cost a whole lot of cash, like scrapping them. They cost what? Like 20 iron each? So mm -hmm. 80 bucks. 80 bucks yeah. is what you're scrapping at this stage yeah, of the game. Yeah. Because if this is if this is the standard move, then like you gotta do you gotta find different. a counterplay somewhere. Yeah. yeah, and I think if you if you split them two if you split them apart from each other, especially expansive, which is so easy for them to split their buildings. Um, oh man, you got to get hit again. Mm -hmm. No that goon squad got purchased. Game Slayer knows that he can see that price. He knows Blues never made the push into that. Very, very important thing to do. Now Blues is just stuck in the mud again for another 30 seconds here. Waiting wow, for with the way he's playing, freeze. I'm surprised he didn't go... S well, I mean, there's just no carbon on this map, but... I, I, this is Game Slayer's preferred strategy. I'd expect to see Scavenger maybe next game. Possibly, but Robotic, this can work just so well. You get so far ahead on upgrades with a move like this. And what's even better is, as a Robotic player, when you shut down your opponent's steel, not only does that hurt them quite badly because it's their primary source of production on HQ level 2, but it means you get that steel money yourself so much yep. longer. Sure. Which just lets you keep powering through black market attacks. One has to wonder if Scavenger really has a way to easily make that much money that fast in the game themselves. And so maybe Robotic is better for the early hits, whereas Scavenger usually functions better in that mid to late game when they have plenty of cash and they can just keep throwing out black market constantly well, blues has a power surge um, we'll see if he yep he hit he just tried it and he had a mediocre okay. yeah he hit two I mean he he rolled he he rolled his first coin flip well and then the second one failed him it would have been you really can't ask for any more than that on a power surge next to a goon squad, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, the question is, should you have gone for an EMP and targeted off to the side? Yeah, that is definitely a fair point. I think if I were him, I would have just power surged the food. But yeah. Although there is a goon squad on right now. Yeah, there is now. I think his power surge hit right before that did. But yeah, ooh. I think Game Slayer sees he has the lead, so he's just he's hunkering down. Yeah, exactly. You know? He's like, I will, I will get to, I will get to off world faster. I just gotta make sure I don't get hit by sabotage. Yeah, and you notice how he's been kind of alternating his purchases. Like, now I'm gonna hit you, then yep. I'm gonna defend myself, then I'm gonna hit you, then I'm gonna defend myself as he gets more places that he needs to defend. Mm. Man. Straightforward play from Game Slayer. I don't know what's, what, it's not what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. HQ level 5 already. Power has gotten to a bit of an interesting position this game. And both players are kind of leaking it right now. Okay, Game yeah, Slayer game. throwing up another wind turbine. That's good. Yeah, both of those, two of his are on weak tiles. Well, they have adjacency bonuses. Yep. Uh, and he can transition them later if he needs to. So, I mean, it is very, very, very weak power. Barely enough to really cover his costs right now, it looks like. But... Maybe he can survive on it. Maybe he can get away with it. Wow, he's actually going to throw down another very weak. Wow. Well, he's really going for it. Yeah. He's committed to that that wind power play. Which oh, is interesting, because it's not right. even particularly cheap. Yep. Yep. Power surge onto Blue's so that, EMP on the Game Slayer. So that worked pretty well, that EMP. And plus, now Game Slayer knows where all of his good squads are. Uh, yeah, yeah. All those goon squads for Game Slayer are revealed, but still, oh man, Blues is on HQ level three. Yeah. Like you expect the robot to be one ahead, but two ahead—that's really far. Thousand, twenty, four, thousand. Okay. Auction is going to go to Game Slayer for twenty-four thousand. Not really surprised by that. Neither player has too much debt, but Blues is at far more risk for it. Given yeah, that Blues he's is, relying on solar panels and things are just It's probably just too late at this point, but Blues had to have gotten a good squad up on the steel mills. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean it's only four or five hundred for him. Interesting, it's seven thousand for Game Slayer. Yeah, of course. He's the only one who's purchased them. So for Blues, so you can see that that differential in the two-player game of uh, the uh, the black market. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it, it's there for Blues to buy. It's not that expensive. Yeah. And glass really isn't all that expensive. It's interesting. Game Slayer did slow down, throw down food, which I don't actually mind as a robot even, because it kind of raises that glass price. Mm -hmm. Makes it a little harder for your opponent to expand most of the time, but the it really hasn't had too much of an impact on the price, interestingly enough. 
And I'm just hoping at this point Blues can really manage to... Well, he's just got to rely on this steel, you know, that's the only thing he's been relying on. HQ level 2, HQ level 3, both, and without defending it, he just doesn't have the money set aside to actually get anywhere, even though his upgrades don't seem to be all that expensive. Alright. Gameslayer has rotated into reactors at this point instead of farms. Makes a lot of sense to me. Farms just were not making, making very much money at all these days. Oh wow, and it's worth noting, I didn't even see this earlier, Blues went into two silicon tiles. And I really, I don't like that much. That's a really, really heavy tile commitment. Like, you just don't have that many... Yeah, it's two lows. I mean, three silicon a second kind of sounds nice, but in a 1v1 game, your opponent is a robot who has for gone for wind power. It's like, were those originally aluminum tiles? I'm just confused why I took those instead of the mediums that are to his north. I don't think those were originally aluminum tiles, mostly because he's been sitting here pumping out more than enough aluminum yeah. to a second. I just, yeah, it's really weird play. Um, yeah. I don't know what the deal was there. Maybe it was just the idea that they could be transitioned into aluminum, mm -hmm. which is a nice thought, but I still think two two claims committed that early to silicon is is too many, Yeah. to my mind. Glass furnaces are coming up for Blues, who has managed to push to HQ level 5. Game Slayer has not gotten to an off-world yet, which honestly surprises me a bit, but he is, he is very, very close. He could literally sell down right now and start the construction if he wanted to. He'll likely wait for this hologram. Oh wow, it's a very well-timed auction. Yeah, might try and pick this up. Might not, honestly. A single hologram in 1v1, if you're paying close attention, you can kind of know what's going on with it. Game Slayer decides he doesn't need it for 10,000, and he's just going to throw down the off-world underneath the one of squad. those early, early established goon squads. Did you see the play Cubit made? Well, you must have obviously broadcast it, right? But the mm -hmm. play Cubit made yesterday, where he, uh, he grabbed two holograms and sort of went to you know, empty two tiles at the same time. Yes, I really enjoyed Cubit's play yesterday where he was just like, I'm going to scrap both these tiles. Yep. I'm going to hologram the looking... off-world tile and then eventually I'll hologram the hacker array tile. And yeah, that was just, yeah, that was pretty ridiculous. So in beta seven, um, constructions will be hologrammed as well. So it'll look like you're, they won't just be invisible. It'll, gotcha. It'll look like you're building a steel mill, even though you're building a hologram, uh, off-road market. Um, but there's still, I, I don't know how to solve the problem of like the actually emptying the tile. Mm -hmm. Because if there's no building there, I don't know. Maybe, I, I guess maybe I could show something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, at least this will be a little bit better. Yeah. It's nice to see holograms kind of get small improvements here and there. So they're just a bit more functional in those uh, games where your opponents can play pay just a, li a little more attention. Yeah. Alright, food launches have started. Never really looked at the off-world prices this game. It does look like food is adequate at mm -hmm. 489 Nothing else is looking too spectacular from life support or anywhere else really. Electronics at 367 is going to be the next after food. Uh-huh. Nonetheless, I mean... That's more than enough cash when your opponent is sitting back on headquarter level four. Blues has moved into an engineering lab, or no, he's moved into no, a hologram. Just he just threw that hologram down. He just didn't even care. Just like, ah, maybe this will look like something that you want to attack. Expensive maybe. Unlikely to work in a 1v1, though, unfortunately for Blues. He has managed to push to HQ level five, but he's still basically even if he started an off-world right now it would be two minutes behind game slayers and so look at all the money that's really not the kind of spot you want to be in all right food shortage game slayer gonna get definitely a pretty big benefit out of that you know if blues had no debt right now he'd be in a pretty decent spot actually making money right. off of his solar panels but the food is really what's killed him this game yeah that's food's it. not Food has not been kind to him this game. He's actually made a ton of money off the power. So if he, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right, if he had somehow been able to get himself out of debt, like this could be a very different game. Or just hadn't taken on so much debt because you have to remember he started with none whatsoever. Right. So yeah, it was stuck for a long mm -hmm. time. So I'm not quite sure what happened there. All right, Blues is going to pick up slant drilling. That is more debt to his name. Obviously I mean, not Blues looking to make money that way anytime soon. Blues has never even claimed water. Yeah. And he found it next to I water. Yeah. So, I, I think that just really... 
Oh, that water price. It wasn't good for a while. I feel like he just kind of got flustered mm -hmm. by the initial attacks and could kind of like see exactly how bad the game was going to go right. when that second cool. EMP landed in particular. Maybe just was, wasn't able to concentrate on things, perhaps. Just getting distracted. Yeah. At this point, Game Slayer does have the cash on hand from that launch to finish this up. And he's going to do just that in another quick little majority buyout. Oof. Boy. Yeah, I think that four CML is just too many. Um, that was a lot of steel to be putting down, especially without defending it. I mean, Game Slayer went for four steel mills as well, but he had him defended. And he knew he was he was first of black market. Exactly. So he just used that second black market purchase Excuse yeah. me, on a goon squad and... He was pretty safe and secure the rest of that game. Alright, I don't know if there's a lot to talk about there. Black Market, guys, that'll kill you. Yep. Game Slayer obviously learning some lessons from Qubit's matches and uh, <laughs> putting them to work here. Yeah. It's interesting to see things turn around. It's in the sense that, like, it seems like the real. There's a real sense now that founding second. Is really really important. Uh, I think Green and Cuba's guy. He was almost just like just you do you know always found second. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so almost. And it'll be interesting to see if people people playing Cuba if they, you know, obviously at some point that bonus would get high enough that Cuba would have found first. Right? This is a question of when is that when is that moment? Um, but it makes me wonder if I should make the, drop the debt a little bit lower uh, in the two-player game at the beginning because boy, that's a lot of dead time. <laughs> it, it is a lot of dead time, but yeah. Now we do remember that Cubit did found first in his second game for for this round, and he didn't get hit by the black market. He didn't get really he didn't get punished for that. His opponent didn't use that black market advantage at all, and that was like thirty two hundred, I believe, that he picked up from that found. So yep. Yep. maybe somewhere around there is going to be our break point for when people are willing to give up that extra claim. And take yeah. that black market hit. Yeah, that was an interesting moment. It was like, how high, how high would you go? Yeah, um, yeah. Two two players is such a different environment. You know, I don't. It's just not using that first in a four player game. You just you just would never do this, right? Because um, it just doesn't make as much sense to uh, punish one other one random player. Right. You know, you'd rather use that three thousand dollars to upgrade. Um, so it's definitely something I'm gonna have to think about for two player. Um, I'm also trying to think why it seems like it's more more important now than in the previous tournaments, but it could be that's just because of our increased awareness of the game. Or I'm also wondering if there's anything about the balance that has changed. And I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, hmm. it may just be that people are better these days. You know. Yeah. It's honestly what it feels like to me. 1v1's getting played a lot more now. I think this is this is the first tournament we've done after a quick match. Oh yeah. That's really came into difference. play. So everybody's yeah. way more familiar with 1v1 I mean, these days. Cubit's played 250 games in quick match. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I mean that's that's a lot. Um, so and that's good, you know. I mean we're starting to see mature strategies now. Um, I think I think now the question is can someone can someone figure out a um, a strategy that you know, is is built to deal with that that you know that early that early black market. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. I it'll, I'm really curious what's going to happen when we get a couple of players in those semifinals, those final rounds that really understand at least some of the play and counterplay in the early game mm -hmm. against each other. I I have no idea what's going to happen. Yep. 